Infinite Jest is a crazy long book. It is so long. And it's also very complicated. And it notoriously has hundreds of footnotes. And, you know, like tons of kind of hot, moody guys really, really like it. So the book takes place in a North American future dystopia called the Organization of North American Nations. And corporations are allowed to purchase naming rights for each year. So most of the novel takes place during the year of the Depend Adult Undergarment. Not only is this relevant to our lives today, but it's also kind of funny. David Foster Wallace was really good at that. For reference, here's a list of the other years that, co that are covered in the book. The year of the Whopper, the year of the Tux Medicated Pad, the year of the Trial Size Dove Bar, the year of the Purdue Wonder Chicken, the year of the Whisper Quiet Maytag Dishmaster, the year of the Yushitsu 2007 Mimetic Resolution Cartridge View Motherboard Easy to Install Upgrade for Infotron Interlace TP Systems for Home, Office, or Mobile, the year of dairy products from the American Heartland, the year of the Depend Adult Undergarment, and finally, the year of GLAD. There are way too many characters to even begin to list here. Like, some guy even made this sort of beautifully designed character map about it. Look at it. Yeah, there's that many characters. It's pretty though, huh? They probably sold that at Urban Outfitters for a while. Some guy you dated probably had that poster. Anyway, the plot is about, I mean, it's sort of about, it's hard to say what it's about, but it's kind of about a missing master cartridge of a film cartridge entitled The Infinite Jest and referred to in the novel as the entertainment. The film is so entertaining that people who watch it lose all interest in anything else in life, and eventually they die. So it's pretty much just the internet. It was made by James and Condenza as his final work. Quebec separatists want to get the tape because they want to use it for, for terrorism. So one could argue that the protagonist in this book is a guy named Hal. He's James's youngest child. Man, he is crazy smart and pretty dateable, except that he's so, so insecure and a little bit crazy. So, you know, he's kind of like all the men who read and fall in love with Infinite Jest. Surprise, surprise. Guys, he has memorized the Oxford English Dictionary. Do you even understand how hard that would be to do? It's one of the longest books out there. Okay, anyway, it's long. It's longer than Infinite Jest. It's like you memorized Infinite Jest, but like times 10 and more boring. Okay, anyway, he does a bunch of drugs and eventually he kind of loses his mind. But I'm getting ahead of myself because that doesn't happen until the end of the book. See, we can't really go scene by scene because this book doesn't really go scene by scene. Like, I could do it, but you would be so confused. Okay, so the book opens with Hal being interviewed at the University of Arizona about his great record. And then Hal remembers eating some mold as a child. And then back to the University of Arizona where Hal is struggling to talk to the deans. And then he's restrained in a restroom and then taken away in an ambulance. And then we see Hal go to a doctor who turns out to be his dad, kind of. There's more there, but we're only on page 12. And there's like thousand, like way more than a thousand pages. Do you see what I mean? It's confusing. So everything sort of spirals out of control at that point, and multiple plots begin to sprout like weeds in a garden, which is a simile I think David Foster Wallace would have disliked. It's too simple. Also, I compared his plots to weeds. Shame on me. Okay, let's call it a triangle fractal, because apparently that's what he called it. Doesn't the triangle fractal look a lot like a Zelda Triforce? I'm just saying. Throughout the book, we basically have three major worlds that are explored. They're nestled inside the rest of the world. One, the Enfield Tennis Academy, where the Incandenza family lives because James, the dad, founded it. And there's also like a bunch of other bro types who sort of live there. Two, the Ennett House and Drug and Alcohol Recovery House, where former criminal Don Gately is a counselor. And when we're there, we talk a lot about drugs and addiction. And three, Somewhere in Arizona, where special agents Helen slash Hugh Steeply, it's like a transsexual thing, and Remy Moraes 
are individually actually having a lot in common, but then they're just chatting secretly about the entertainment and how they want to use it for terrorism. And they kind of fall in love, I think. Important characters I haven't really mentioned include Joelle Van Dyne, who is also known as Madame Psychosis and starred in the entertainment and is also called the prettiest girl of all time. She's an addict and she wears a veil because she might have been disfigured by acid, but it's really not that clear. Also, Mario and Oren in Candenza, who are Hal's brothers. Mario is deformed and Oren is an estranged, womanizing punter. I should mention that these guys' dads dad killed himself by putting his head in the microwave. That sounds horrible. That's the worst way that you could possibly do that. The mom, Avril, is kind of a clean freak who is having sex with her adoptive or half-brother. In any case, it's inappropriate. Who else? Oh yeah, there's Lyle, who is always in the ETA weight room, room and quote, lives off the sweat of others, literally, end quote. There's no resolution, and no one really knows what to make of this book. Well, or actually everyone does. Everyone has an opinion about what this book is about. This would make an excellent book for a class at Oberlin. I'll bet they teach this class at, Over at Oberlin. 